battle in this country between those holding to traditional morality and those espousing hedonism has reached a fever pitch, manifested in no clearer terms than the ideological conflict over homosexuality. But forget about same-sex marriage, employment discrimination, and AIDS funding. There is perhaps no area of public debate that causes blood pressures to escalate more rapidly than the question of whether public schools should teach children about homosexuality. Homosexual activists believe that elementary school children should be taught that homosexuality is a natural and normal variation of human sexuality. But activists do not address that issue head on. Instead, they have created a climate of hysteria, warning parents and school administrators that students who consider themselves gay or lesbian are subject to almost continual harassment and violence, suffering poor self-image and even engaging in self-destructive behavior. The answer, homosexual activists insist, is to teach young children that gay is okay. And one of the most effective instruments of that push is a video entitled, It's Elementary, talking about gay issues in school. It is finding its way into education departments and teacher training sessions all over the U.S. It's Elementary was produced by Helen Cohen and Deborah Chasnoff, the latter an Academy Award-winning documentary producer. In 1992, Chasnoff became the first woman to openly declare her lesbianism at the Oscars. Cohen and Chasnov went into six elementary and middle schools where teachers and principals are already force-feeding children with pro-gay grist. The narrator says the educators allowed the filming in the hope of inspiring other educators and parents to take the next step in their own school communities to teach children respect for all. But American Family Association believes that elementary school children are not naturally curious about homosexuality and that they should not be indoctrinated to believe that the lifestyle of homosexuality is right. Instead, AFA believes that the discussion of such issues falls under the job description of a child's parents and not teachers or education bureaucrats. And the producers of It's Elementary seem to realize that most people believe this as well. As the video's narrator begins to calmly introduce the theme of It's Elementary, she admits... Most adults probably don't see why schools should teach young children about gay people. And they can't what becomes clear in the video, however, is that homosexual activists see why schools should teach about the gay lifestyle. It is to capture the hearts and minds of the next generation. Most adults probably don't see becomes the theme of its elementary, portraying the ignorance and bigotry of adults, including parents, as the cause of homophobia. Way at the beginning of the year, we talked about, um, I gave you, I told you the word Indian, and I asked you to paint whatever came to mind when you heard that word. Do you remember that? Yeah. It's the same thing. What I want you to do when you, when you go in just a minute and work in small groups, you're not going to be painting, okay, you're going to be writing down um, whatever comes to your mind when you hear the word gay or when you hear the word lesbian. So nothing's right or wrong There's in no this right. either? That's right. There's All no right. right or wrong answer. What? Mary. Where do kids get their ideas? It's Elementary provides the answer. You came up with a huge number of very, um, very different, very diverse words that I'm curious about where you get your ideas from. Where do, where do you get your information? Where do you get your thoughts? Where do you get your um, images from? I mostly get it from my parents and my, my aunts and uncles because they're always talking about it, saying it's wrong and you shouldn't do it. Because, but I think it's just the way a person is. You can't really change it. When it's elementary, is not targeting parents and other adults in general. It zeroes in on Christians in particular. From a series of clips from TV talk shows, it's elementary includes only two individuals who represent what is supposedly the Christian view of homosexuality. You, I'm gay. God hates fags. God hates who? Fags. Kevin, you would actually disown your child if yes. they were gay. The Bible that I read, the Bible says homosexuals should be put to death. And later, okay. a child tells his view yeah. of Christianity. Say, um, when you said that um, people believe stuff, um, people, be um, some Christians believe that if you're gay or lesbian, that you'll go to hell, so they want to torture them, yeah. stuff like that. So. The message of It's Elementary is clear. If a person believes that homosexuality is an immoral or unnatural lifestyle, 
then that person is portrayed as an ignorant, prejudiced bigot. And that's a lesson that the teachers on its elementary fully expect their students to learn. Killing wasn't a mark saying, hey, hey, ho, ho, homophobia has got to go. Homophobia means being scared of gay or lesbian people by Kaelin. And this is the whole crowd saying, hey, hey, ho, ho, homophobia has got to go. And this is a sign that says, we want rights too. And this is a banner that says, we want rights too. Even worse, however, is the contention of its elementary that such homophobia leads to terrible violence against homosexuals. If the educational system doesn't deal with those issues early on, then there's bashing of gays in the, in the streets. William Kiley arrived in court still wearing a neck brace nearly two months after he was the victim of an alleged gay bashing. Central to proving the attack as a hate crime are the words Huff used. What was he calling you, Kylie was asked. He's calling me a faggot and a queer as he's pushing me on the shoulder. He's telling me, let's get it on. In New York City, for example, such violence rose last year by 110%. The numbers of gay men murdered are startling, but even more alarming. Most of those charged with the murders are teenagers. They should have it in elementary school. They should have the beginning discussions much, much earlier. This theme provides the rationale for its elementary. Take the discussion of homosexuality out of the hands of ignorant parents and place it into the hands of an enlightened public school system. So how should it be taught? I mean, are you too young? No. Should you not be reading Jack? And maybe, maybe somebody could talk about Jack from last year. My parents, like, especially my father, he was not too happy at all. He said that and my brother, and then it became like this big family issue that was being talked about, like over the, the dinner table. And they were like, oh, your school is too liberal. They shouldn't be teaching that in school. They're sending the wrong message, and this and that. And this is like, it's really hard for me sometimes kind of yeah. to figure out where I stand mm -hmm. on an issue when you have all these people who, like your family members, my brother, my brother thinks it's disgusting. He outwardly says it's disgusting, it's a sin, it's nasty. I hear some people advocating that we give facts and let people form their own opinions and ideas. And I hear other people saying that you actually have to com combat homophobia and almost deal with that conflict of values that Elvira's bringing up that is very important and it's very true in families. I don't know, it's just that kids like we hear all these different things from different places, people telling us different things, and school needs to give us all the facts so we can decide on our own what to think and, you know, what to do. But are they given the facts, and are they really deciding for themselves? Earlier in New York City's Public School 87, fourth grade teacher Cora Sangri told her students that their ideas about homosexuality were neither right nor wrong. Those words play well to the casual observer of its elementary. But a more critical examination of the video shows teachers' subtle yet powerful manipulation of the students in order to lead them to the desired conclusion. If, if your friend is gay and he comes and plays with you, do you think you're going to catch it? Most people, yeah, if they have homophobic. Oh, if they're homophobic, they think they'll catch it. But if you're not, do you think it's catching? No, you can't it's catch impossible. it. It's impossible. Following a discussion about stereotypes that deal with clothes, teenagers, and ethnic groups, one teacher turns the discussion to homosexuality. Okay. Keep in your mind this issue of stereotypes and then try to think about it as you're thinking about lesbians and gay men. What I'd like you to do right now is take about 10 minutes and I want you to write First, what your attitude is, what you think your attitude right at this moment is about the whole issue of homosexuality. And the second thing is what you would most like to learn. Most of the time I put gays and lesbians down. I know it's not right, but I do it anyway. I say things like gay men molest children, but that's not true. Most of the time I don't even know what I'm saying. I say it all out of ignorance. I should find out what's true first before even saying anything about gays and lesbians. Okay, so this is a chance to educate yourselves in the sense of really getting an opportunity to engage on this issue. And you're going to have speakers tomorrow who are gay and who are willing to come and talk about their lives. And that's an opportunity, again, for you to ask questions that you really have.
Most of the kids have been getting the message. But to hammer home the point, the school system has been inviting homosexuals to address the students under the guise of teaching them respect for others. In short, diversity training for minors. Okay, um, I'm just going to say a few things about um, that we have to say before we start speaking. Um, one of them is that we are not here to recruit you at all. I'm not here to try to get you to become gay or lesbian. We're just here to tell you about ourselves. So if you want to ask us any questions, that's why we're here. We come into classrooms and we speak to students like you. I've been to most high schools, junior highs. Why do these homosexuals visit the public schools? And are they convincing students to change their minds? I think that there are people, teachers, who think that we're going to come in and, you know, molest the kids or, like, tell them kind of really strange things about sex or something. Um, and, and I've definitely come into a class with kids who obviously have pretty weird ideas and left and uh, we do evaluations at the end and, and have them just write really nice things like, you know, today I thought that, that gay people were all evil and I realize now that they're just like me. So uh, we want to thank you guys for having us. To what extent have, you know, have, have there been changes in what you think? And also, have any stereotypes been broken. Yeah. And I was like, they're gay. I mean, I mean, they look straight, just like other people. Yeah, they look straight. I was like, well, I guess you know, you could never really tell until you met, meet them, and you know, tell them about you. You can never really tell. Not all homosexuals who address these issues come from outside the classroom. One homosexual teacher steers his kids to the politically correct view of marriage. Let me tell you quickly the background. Today, the law says that um, if you're the same sex, two men and two women, you can't get married. It is against the law. And I thought that it might be kind of fun for us to sort of be pretend ju judges for a few minutes. What I'm going to give each of you is a sheet that just tells you that um, some people think that it's wrong for gays to get married, that it's not natural, and that it goes against what a family is. Other people think that the state should not decide these things, that it should just be up to two adults to decide what they want to do. What do you think the answer to these questions are? Should, should gays be allowed to marry? Should they not? I don't see why they shouldn't. I don't see why they shouldn't get married. You know, I mean, they love each other. It's just like any other people. I think gay people should get married. Guys, they love the one, let them get married. I know. Let's yeah. say if Andre is about to get married to Eric, I'm just doing this, but I am the judge and I'm saying, no, you two can't get married. I don't care if you love them. You can't get married. How do you think you guys will feel? Mad? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you think that they can't get married? I don't know. <laughs> when noting the manipulation of students when it comes to the issue of homosexuality, it's ironic to note that when the U.S. Supreme Court banned prayer in public schools and when it forbade the posting of the Ten Commandments, one of the major reasons was that school sanctioning of religion would have a coercive effect on students. But what happens when one school has a pro-homosexual assembly? where children are herded into the auditorium to hear teachers proudly proclaim their homosexuality and others approve of it. Suddenly, coercion in the name of a homosexual agenda is applauded. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's much better. Uh, my name is Jeff, um, and for those of you who don't know me yet, I teach creative movement to the first and second grade, and I was an after-school teacher. And this is a soccer ball. How many of you have ever kicked a soccer ball or played the game of soccer? Come on over on that bench. I bet you guys are fly right. There you go. You guys are included too. Imagine if every time I went to play soccer, I had to hide my right shin. I might hide it like this. And then I try to play soccer. It wouldn't be easy, but I could do it. It would, you know, it would take a lot of energy to play soccer and also hide my leg. Well, at CFS, 
I don't have to hide. So I can play soccer with two legs. Can you see how much better I can play? Yep. At CFS, I can tell the truth that I'm a gay man. And that gives me so much more energy to be a better teacher, to be a better co-worker, and to be a better friend. I'll see you on the soccer pitch. I want to say to you all that today I feel the most proud of the kids in this school. And I just want to say that I know that the kids in this school are going to go out and you're going to make this world a better and a safer place, not just for gay and lesbian people, but for all of us. Thanks, you guys. You're great. At least one young lady got the message. I think that it's good that a lot of teachers came out because I think it's better to know somebody that's gay and it makes you like look at it in a different way. Because now you actually like feel like you know what gay is all about and like it isn't actually different than anybody else. It's just... Despite what fourth grade teacher Cora Sangri said, in public schools across the country, the video It's Elementary is instructing teachers and students that there is a right answer after all, that gay is okay and that homosexuality is normal and healthy. And if you dare to believe or say otherwise, then you're prejudiced and a bigot. And even worse, you may be contributing to anti-gay violence. Start with... Not all the teachers at Cambridge Friends School are happy with this propaganda, however. One brave woman almost apologetically raises some concerns about the next day's activities. In the end, the agenda is advanced. Um, I don't know, I guess for me, I and I'm not trying to be decisive, and I don't know what to do with, about this, but as, as a school, are we saying that the kids have to support this? I mean, I guess that's what it sounds like to me that we're saying, if a child comes from a background that says that homosexuality is not correct, are we telling that child that they're supposed to, this is, this is what you're supposed to do? I guess I keep getting that feeling that if a person is coming from that background that we're supposed to tell them, this is right, and I just feel like that child is going to... for you, but I think that we are asking kids to, to believe that this is right. Not as a matter of moral principle, but as a matter of... We're educating them, and this is part of what we consider to be uh, a healthy education. And I, I want to go back to the thing that Art said, which is um, that what we're trying to have people do is to understand that people are and that we have to respect the right of all of us to just be right. and be who we are and we do that in the classroom when we teach so that everyone can learn you, you don't there isn't a right way there isn't a wrong way there isn't a good way there isn't a bad way the way that it is is what it is and it never is clean and neat and tidy and without some kind of conflict because we don't all live all by ourselves. The principal of the school agrees and says not all morality is taught in the home. I don't think that it's appropriate that values only be taught at home. Uh, there are social values as well. There are community values. And when you allow a, a child on a playground to hurl an insult at another child or to say your mom is queer or to say those sorts of things without addressing the issues is I, I think uh, unconscionable. How are homosexual activists so successful in getting their agenda advanced into public schools? One strategy is to convince officials that so-called homosexual students suffer so much harassment that their self-esteem plummets. In spite of that I feel very motivated to keep going with this in my classroom because I know how hard it was for me to grow up and I know that nobody ever gave me any sense that it was okay to be who I was or that there were supports, resources for me, anything. So I know what it's like to grow up in that way and if I could even reach one child, if I could help one child to grow up feeling that it was okay, remembering my words or the story that I read them 
or even knowing that I was gay, if that could help them to, you know, grow up and not feel so isolated and, so, uh, and not feel as though their life was just going to be complete hell, then, you know, it's worth it to me. David Miller, National Field Director for AFA, helps local communities with pro-family public policy. He sees such homosexual strategies as deceptive. You know, over and over, the theme of its elementary stresses the need for children's safety and self-worth, compassion and fairness when it comes to gay issues. I think everyone agrees that if any child is being harassed, threatened or assaulted for any reason, whether because they're overweight or because they have bad acne or because of the clothes they wear, school should intervene. But homosexual activists aren't interested in this message. What they really want is to sound an alarm and then use it as an excuse to teach that gay is okay. The fact is, schools should not be in the business of legitimizing homosexual conduct for any reason. I'm sure there are some children who don't feel right or accepted by everyone because they use drugs, or they are promiscuous, or they look at pornography on the internet, yet schools don't affirm those behaviors. Studies show that homosexual use engage more often than non-homosexual use in self-destructive behaviors such as using alcohol and drugs, smoking, sexual promiscuity, even criminal activities. Homosexual teens also have vastly higher rates of sexually transmitted diseases, including AIDS. And the thing is, these statistics hold true even in cities like San Francisco that are friendly to the homosexual lifestyle, proving that it is the lifestyle that is destructive and not society's disapproval of it. The truth is, teens who are encouraged to enter the homosexual community are actually plugged into a network of dysfunctional relationships that are, by nature, destructive of self-esteem. Its elementary goes so far as to suggest that, without a plan to teach children that homosexuality is normal, homosexual teenagers may kill themselves. And 30% of all teen suicides are committed by kids trying to deal with their own homosexuality. It's alarming. The amount of attempted suicide and suicides in teenagers who are gay and lesbian is astronomical because they haven't been exposed to this education, but they are gay and lesbian. And this, this society is saying that's not okay and th that they aren't okay. So what they do? They try to kill themselves. Another key factor behind the agenda to normalize homosexuality is the myth that 30% of teen suicides are committed by young people identifying themselves as homosexual but who feel unaccepted because of society's homophobia. It's interesting to know where that number came from. This so-called statistic was produced out of thin air by homosexual political activist Paul Gibson. It gained initial validity when it found its way into a federal report on youth suicide in 1989. But those who quote the 30% figure fail to realize that Gibson used suspicious numbers in his report. Gibson was quoting from a story in the Washington Blade, it's a homosexual newspaper that merely speculated that as many as 3,000 homosexual teens kill themselves each year. It sounds alarming until you realize that the total of all teen suicides that year was only about 2,000. Because of the flaws in Gibson's study, then Secretary of Health Lewis Sullivan rejected the study even though it had been included in the government report. And in spite of Sullivan's rejection, Gibson's claim has been repeated so often by homosexual activists and a sympathetic media that it is now assumed to be established scientific fact. Many other studies since then have exposed Gibson's flaws. A national spokesman for the National Institute of Mental Health noted that the research studies most often cited to support the gay teen suicide myth are limited in both quantity and quality common standards in suicide research and reliable methods for measuring suicide attempts were non-existent and the fact that death certificates do not mention sexual orientation is ignored because of these factors the national institute of mental health has said it is not possible to accurately compare suicide attempt rates between gay and lesbian youth and non-gay youth in the general population in any case the number is probably no higher than those children who are abusing drugs and alcohol or who have a poor relationship with their parents or who have any number of other problems. Why? It's because normal kids have high suicide rates too. 
But as a society, we are not going to approve of alcohol or drug abuse in hopes that these teens will stop trying to kill themselves. The facts show that gay is not okay, and it's actually destructive to a child's well-being. Homosexual activists are successfully using this school safety and self-worth argument as a Trojan horse to get their agenda into the schools as early as possible. They've gained a sympathetic ear in places like the schools you saw in this video. In November 1998, Chicago Public Schools announced that its elementary will be used for staff development and training in all of the district schools. In response to Matthew Shepard's murder, using the safety trump card, they have convinced a University of Wyoming faculty member to use the video in an effort to sensitize faculty and students about the roots of homophobia and anti-gay violence. Many powerful liberal education groups have heartily endorsed the video, including the National Education Association. The union's president, Bob Chase, is quoted by the video's producers as saying, schools cannot be neutral when dealing with this issue. I'm not talking about tolerance, I'm talking about acceptance. And that's why we've made this video, Suffer the Children. Homosexual activists are taking full advantage of the inroads they have built into public education and are targeting the youngest and most vulnerable of our society in order to teach them that homosexuality is as normal as any other choice one might make, that it's healthy and okay for our kids. They've realized that if they can reach children with their message before parents are able to poison their minds, they have won the future battle for acceptance in this society. A truly compassionate response from schools and parents would be to lead children away from homosexuality rather than into it. We must stand up for our children today and forbid the subversion of their innocence. We must do whatever we can to keep them true to the beliefs and values we hold dear. And we must not let anyone indoctrinate them with false moral teachings. Parents and grandparents, teachers, religious leaders, whoever you are watching this video, if you care about your children and grandchildren, if you care about the moral underpinnings of our society, do something to keep its elementary out of our nation's schools and children's organizations. Contact your local school administrator or principal and find out if its elementary is being used in your school district or if the subject of homosexuality is being discussed in your school. If its elementary is being used, contact your state's elected officials and express your concern. Offer to provide a copy of Suffer the Children so they might see for themselves how children are being manipulated on the subject of homosexuality. Do something before it's too late. The Lord Jesus once said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We now live in a culture whose schools will not allow little children to pray. Instead, many of those same schools enthusiastically allow homosexuals in, either in person or through their agenda. And our children now hear a different voice, saying, Allow the children to come unto us, and we will teach them. For American Family Association, I'm Ed Vitagliano.